I once adopted a bunny, and I named this bunny Jillian. Jillian was a lovely bunny, button-nosed and salad munching. Yet Jillian had a winking habit. She winked incessantly. What an idiosyncratic rabbit! I thought. Jillian winked. The categorical imperative is the Kantian moral obligation to essentially uphold the golden rule. The basic idea is that moral agents should not act in a manner that if all other moral agents were to behave identically, the original perpetrator would disapprove of the resultant state of the world. For instance, a thief picks pockets with little reserve, but would be quite unhappy if someone else's slippery fingers emptied his own. He is thus obligated to not pick pockets. In believing the categorical imperative to be a universal obligation, Kant presupposes the autonomy of the rational agent. That is, he believes we are more than slaves to our passions. The way to dusty death, candlelit, dimly flickering, told idiotically. Benji feels but cannot say, and Quintin drowns in gall which was once milk. The bloody accomplice scrubs her hands ineffectually in the gall in which Quintin drowned. They departed in fury, their walking shadows fretting till time's last syllable. Hey, did you put the pizza in the oven? The pizza? Yes, the pizza. In the oven? As opposed to throwing it in a pot of boiling water? Well, uh, you didn't, did you? Uh, well, it's not necessarily that I didn't. You didn't put the pizza in the oven. You didn't boil it, did you? No, no, that would be ridiculous, right? Of course, yeah, that would be ridiculous. I, uh, only boiled the crust. You what? To understand a given behavior, we must first consider what occurred in the subject's brain within a second of the behavior occurring. We then step back and examine the environmental stimuli that affected the subject seconds to minutes before the behavior. We also consider how experience months to years before reshaped the subject's brain, how the subject's immature frontal cortex during adolescence affected the adult the subject became, and how early childhood and fetal life caused changes in the subject's brain functioning and gene expressions. We must not forget about the very genes themselves, nor how culture shapes the social environment in which the behavior occurred. Finally, we pull back yet again to ask how the behavior evolved over millions of years. There thus seems to be no space for a homunculus type agent independent of the innumerable factors that influence behaviors, thoughts, feelings. And since no one behavior, thought, or feeling is any less biological than any other, free will, in one sense, is just our undiscovered biology. Having not put the pizza in the oven, Jillian the Winking Bunny, to whom the categorical imperative does not extend, on her way to dusty death and unaware of that which she does not control, took a breath and leaped into the void between the stars.